show. And all I'm saying is that if Halloween events last till November, they'd be way more popular. I mean, I'm Pixel Cheesecake. But I still have a point, though. Honestly, it's, uh... Halloween should be moving, uh... Christmas words. Instead of having... Christmas, uh... Be all... Preemptively striking before Halloween even arrives. Yep. And we were uh, returning with more of the first Ace Attorney game. Yep. We're gonna play through the entire trilogy. Yep. Trilogy. One, One game at a time. And when we break this down, we'll use Brentel Floss's lyrics. Episode 1 will be Moral Combat. Episode 2 will be In the Near Future, Courts of Vlogga, Super Fast. Episode 3 will be There's No Jury, Just a Judge, Gotta Win in Three Days Max. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, looking at the OBS stuff. It was doing a thing. Yeah. Uh, just seeing, because our, our voices should be loud and clear over the music. Hopefully the music's well. going to be a wonderful backdrop, and I'm sure YouTube's editing, built in editing software, didn't get kneecapped to the ground to make. It impossible for people who aren't the best at video editing to not need a professional editor to get proper videos made or fixed or anything. Am I right? Am I right, YouTube? If that's the case, we can move to LBRY. I mean, I post the cross post the videos up there anyway but if I gotta spend money I'm putting a price tag on it all I'm saying is that's is that's the bisexual agenda make, make everything make everyone pay for what bisexuals make oh crap I might lose my butt my Biluminati license. Uh, moving on from that. Courtroom time. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. Alright, so while I was playing this. I thought up of two voices for Edgeworth. Sounds good. So, okay, you're going to hear voice number one. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The second voice will come later. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor, the prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your 
name and profession to the court. Hello. Sir. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I am the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Yeah, let's see who, who, who can get back to the uh, goofy voice uh, first. We both suck at acts, uh, voices. I was doing Sam, Sam from Sam and Max. What are you doing, pal? Uh, My voice used to s sound like this, but I took it on a vocal coach. So when I say "freeze, dirt bags," the dirt bags really freeze. I'm kind. Of, it's funny because I'm like, I'm trying to like move my vocal cords to do it but I'm also just like nervous about it because what if I just suck and it just sounds awful hey this is what YouTube's for making a fool of yourself and making the mucho dinero yeah. if Smosh has anything to prove about that yeah. quick flip me the bird I don't have any birds to throw at you Oh, I thought you were just going to flip me off. Yeah. Well, it's not like they would... Not like they can see. I'm still nervous. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Just pretend I'm wearing another layer of clothing. Okay. I'm the detective's... No. Pow. 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 Try some more mops like this, dude. Do, 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 do. Doing silly voices. Uh, uh, I'm the. His tie moves with the rest of his thing, meaning his suit's like three to three sizes too large. I just think that's how respiration works, dude. It's supposed to be around the neck, not the chest. Well, it goes on top of the chest. No, it's supposed to be like at the t right below the neck. Do we gotta watch the turnabout encounter? No. I know that definitely wasn't picked up by the recording. Unfortunately, it wasn't. So, I'm just vamping here. So, I think that. I think poles and strip clubs are the only straight things in the world. Can someone change my mind? Because lamp poles posts need to bend so they can light up the street. Okay. I think we're ready. Alright, let's hear it. I'm the detective in charge of homicides at, down at the precinct, sir. Perfect. Go for it. It only took some stealing. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. <coughs> the body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blood object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the Thinker, found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Now, detective. Yes, sir? You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? 
Can you tell me why? Ye yes, sir. I had all hard evidence he did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Giggity. You see, sir, I was very excited by the murder. As soon as the phone call, call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I really arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness. We can't... There's so much liquid in my mouth. Why? We had a witness account, account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. I'll do the Samuel Acker voice until the... Hmm, that very moment, you say. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Y yes, Your Honor. Cross examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? Well, my sister couldn't find any contradiction it's in a witness testimony. She would bluff and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. Always. Yeah. It works lots of times. Heh. <laughs> I should have expected my would know some some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give it a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to be in my cross-examination. Cross-examination. My phase arrest. Uno momento. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel. Right across from the scene, from the crime scene. Hmm, okay. I pressed. Not sure it did much though. Right, please continue. Now, I don't think we need to voice the, like this part. We'll just... Voice the parts that are new. Alright. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm. Right. I'd say about. I'd say it was about three minutes. Hmm. That, that's pretty fast. Our motto this month. Month is quick response. That's how I got to got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So, tell us who the two people who you found on the crime scene were. Yes, sir. Are you absolutely absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal. Your dumb act will only get you so far. With her hunky... Hunky? Funky hippie clothes. Funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair? You two sound out like... Like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press... With a little more... With a little more care. Hmm. 
I'm gonna just do this one. Hold on, just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? You did say it. Exactly what was the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence. What? Miss Mary isn't suspicious. And she is a pink, pal. Well, well, I guess she is pink. Certain parts. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... I guess print pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Gah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I t should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was clearly written in blood. Test, lab test results showed that the victim that, that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How do you like that? That's my hard evidence. Given how big he is in canon, like mm. tall, yeah. I would assume that he has some hard evidence elsewhere, but that would be counterproductive in the court. Research. Phoenix Wright height chart. <laughs> yes. More or less. Uh, oh, he's six foot. Which would be big in Japan. Yep. Now that does only uh, only puts us puts him at a couple of inches higher, uh, taller than us. Yep. Yeah. Imagine him being like 6'5 with a size 13 shoe. Yeah. Just, just be the literal big man on campus walking around. Yeah. <laughs> Would explain why he appears to be such a ladies' man. Yeah. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you testify, testify about this vital piece of ed evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I'm pretty sure I remember what we're supposed to do here. If not, we have a big enough health bar. Yeah. After we get, after we get caught up with this, I have the Phoenix Wright game we can play. Uh, what's that? I'll show you when we get to it. Okay. Anyway, uh, 
She couldn't have written the name because she died instantaneously. Yes. Dick Detective Gonshu, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey. That's clearly what you were saying. What? what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course you were. Who else could? You have it backwards, detective. But backwards The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from the from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. No one the blood. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? What? Do you remember? I think it was the day after. Let's go, yeah. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being that autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility that the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these res results this morning. N no way. I kind of just did the yokai's voice, didn't I? No, no way. I have gone. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. Damn you to hell! Hold on. I wanna look up something. You blew it up! Oh no, he's hot. Anyway, continue on. Okay. I should've known you said you'd have something up your sleeve. <laughs> Why, well, right, Mr. Light, you look shocked. Something you want to say? I was arm! No, I would say. I would say you're a sham. Okay. Mr. Edgeworth. Okay. You do. I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you have possibly had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal tax of the prostic prostitution. Pro prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, 
I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Well, your honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Seriously, it's the sad cat dance all over again. Yeah. Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> She's been standing like the. Like okay. I. Anime schoolgirl. Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will will uh, halt from excessive fan service. The witness will refrain from. This witness has no honor. From wanton. From wanton winking. Aw, yes, your honor. This, this is, is not good. good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Except for me. I'm totally gay. <laughs> that would be just the funny... I told you about my theory about Bayonetta, right? Uh, maybe. After Bayonetta 3... She goes home, orders garlic bread, and just eats it in bed, watching a hor watching the new a newscast of, and no one knows who saved the world and why, but God help us all that peace returns to our fair city. I know. I I know you haven't seen the uh, intro scene, but uh, I'll just. Uh, uh, little spoiler. New York gets hard fucked. Just completely wipes out the city. How many times has New York been attacked in media? Countless times. More times than I have bones in my body. Mm. Oh no, she's hot. And where's that music? Sad dance cat dance music coming from or is it called the paw dance I don't fucking know anymore sad cat uh, okay here's the uh, assignment for the listeners and viewers uh, Miss April May sad cat dance perfect tell us where you were on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred um, gee, I guess I was, like, in my hotel room. Tee hee. Please talk a little louder. Um, gee, I guess I was, like, in my hotel room. Tee hee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Faye and Co. Law Orifices. Orifices? Damn, we... Hmm... Mm, that's right, big boy. So, have you identified the the jokes of the two voices? Yes. So one is Miles being a robot, and the other is him. You know, my attempt at an anime boy.
you can contact me for your anime anime voices at one eight hundred Joe dot org. Please testify to the court what you saw. Witness testimony. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy with. Every little bitsy witsy. Wink. Hmm. hmm. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witnesses... I thought the witnesses' testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss M Mia's phase under study, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yeah, man. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know? Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the out the window? Were you were you expecting to see something? Oh well, um, she. What? That's it. She can't get. She can't get out of the out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know, had a feeling. Well, I had a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should put press a little harder on this one. Mm -hmm. I'm always food pressing on her. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... oh... Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. But badgering You insist on needling, needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, stop her. The poor girl. Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl. What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting at the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. I'm impressed on this one. She dodged. Dodge what? 
Well, the attack. Please continue your testimony. Now that was useless. But what the How did you know it was my client? Huh? Well, I... Gee... First of all, she had a girl's physique. And, and secondly, she was... She was small. Who else could it be but her? Hold on a minute. That testimony sinks. What? What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet. Why? Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Here. Mr. Like, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning of this? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have no noticed her clothes be before noticing her physique. <laughs> no one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss F Miss May? Row. Row. What are you what trying? Are you to say? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw I what I saw. I. I just didn't think of all, all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Wink. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I'd like to have her. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And then she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock, um, that kind of statuey clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Hee <laughs> hee. Oh uh, my god, she made it so obvious yeah. for... I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. You know what to do from here. So obviously we're... We present the statue. Quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Because it was brought up as a statue and not a clock. Yep. Present... Present. Think her. Yeah. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? <laughs> you just said that this statue of 
the Thinku was the clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Eh. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, er. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. The question's all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. <laughs> Objections of Saint. You may continue to question the witness. That was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because... I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fane Co. N no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of the law office The law offices of Fane Co, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have won. Your Honor... Me no. Your Honor, members of the court... It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Because it's empty. The clock is missing its clockwork. Uh, how could you possibly? Just take a look. Right now! Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? Is as the defendant says. This clock was missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain the cor court meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have run. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. Fat? Uh, I think it was more like fat. F fat? Well, Miss May. Tisk tisk. Tis, tis. yeah. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mister Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? It, it was after the witness heard the clock. Then, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she had heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? <laughs> Impossible, of course. 
I have proof. What? Wasn't you two told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. Proof. It's in the pudding. <laughs> and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... The conversation. Take a look at this. That's a very cute cell phone. Oh, oh. You, you, oh, oh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is a defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The, t the defendant's cell phone. This this was brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. <sighs> that good detective pair will never. Uh, he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, uh, uh, I, I should probably, uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take out the clockwork. Sorry. Your Honor. I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness had even arrived at her hotel. But, but, but. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well... Isn't it uh, obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was it in? again? I go, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Hee <laughs> hee. Jiggle, jiggle. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defendant have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please pr produce this evidence that will prove that... The witness had not seen the clock before. Made by Larry Butts. Yep. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Mm. Oh, excuses now on sale today? Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Mm. What's it to you, head? Looks more like. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! I can't quite do women's voices. That was a lot better than what I was doing. Yeah. Whoa, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Oh, 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 oh. silly me. 
did I, uh, like, lose it? I guess I did. Tee hee. Wink. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know that weapon? the weapon was the clock? Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this be on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, yes Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. Yeah, heard about it. The I witness missed. had never held the clock in her hand before. I misread that as you had heard it. No. Yeah. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she would know the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Wiretap! Have a look at this. I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Maya's, Maya Faye's phone, were you not? Oh, uh... Your Honor, this is the viral it. I'm not entirely sure that is. Objection okay. over. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. Proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon is the clock is... I'm pretty sure we just... Yeah. We use the... I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Uh, I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <sighs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to... You, you lawyer. It's not fair. All of you gang g ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm 
So I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court seats. The real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. You did, didn't you? Alright. Uh, uh, unless we're supposed to ask about the wiretap. Uh, why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. D do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't... Isn't Tippy Tappy or relevant? Tippity tapping. Yeah, she's saying exactly why Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. Definitely would uh, cement a connection between the two. Yeah. Well. Whatever. Oops. Not bad. Well, well Miss May, yeah. do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with the murder, even though you tapped her phone? Oh, I like to see her pull that off. I'd like to see her pull a lot of things off. Oh, you. Miss Sewer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You're probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull the hat off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who slept that, and of course I can, and will. You can't be serious. No way. It's time for me to strip! Why, I say, way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Miss Sewer. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, well, that's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal co coffee, but cold? If you don't drink it quick, the ice, ice melts and then you have... Regular cold coffee. Uh, iced coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Wink. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the mur on the scene at the time of the murder. So where does this leave, where does that leave us? It is my greatest displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Why are you texting your boyfriend? No, I'm doing something else. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fay, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, no? does the defense have anything to say? Uh, well... Come on, think, think of something. I think we should. Yeah, I think we supposed to call the bellboy? Yeah. I think. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. It's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object. 
I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold, hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? Yeah. If you, if Miss May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the guilt verdict of guilty from Miss Maya Faye. That is my condition. What? I bet I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Or I'm accepted. We'll thread that needle. All right, I've got some. I've got nothing to lose, except for well, everything. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Have fun. Yes. Understood. I accept yeah. your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. I'm falling for this trap. Uh oh. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. We'll take a 15 minute recess to collect him. I believe we're, we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bell boy. For a second there I thought it was going to crash. You want to do this guy? Yes sir. I received your summons in the middle of work sir. I'm happy to be of service. That two sort lo set looks rather heavy. So without further ado, the Look. witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel. You get the joke? You just got it? God. Damn it. It's like another hotel name, but reverse. I, I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her room at nine, on the dot, sir. I, I brought it to her. Precisely, at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved in the murder now, Maya will be finished. I'm the head bellboy at the gate, fine Gatewater Hotel in, in the business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our uh, guest, Miss May. She asked for a nice coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. Wait a minute. After I delivered the iced coffee to our, to our guest, Miss May herself, I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. 
Precisely. Nine. Nine o'clock. Then? Precisely. Exactly. And most definitely, sir. Nine p.m. How, how can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy. Hee <laughs> hee. I'd like to... I'd like to... Uh, I'd like... like... Like, oh, bellboy, teehee, I'd like, like, uh, iced coffee at exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. You, you rarely see any other time other than dawn be described as crack. At the crack of dawn? Well, the crack of noon, per. I'll see you at high noon. <laughs> crack of noon. The Lone Ranger and Tonto are waiting for the. for the bandits to show up to town. Why would she be so particular about the time? You sure it wasn't Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It was an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she... She, the get the guest favored me with um an embracer an embarrasser, sir. Embracer? Embracer. Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More like a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is that it? Tisk tisk. tisk. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you are end this, this rather than rather, rather end this rather tedious cross examination here. Hmm. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I protest. Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This sword of justice has gone on long enough. No, no, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That is all. Okay. This is really it. Now this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? I think I know which thing to ask, but... Okay, so... One 
thing that you may remember is that the laptop's about to die. Don't worry. We are total professionals. Not until the paychecks start coming in. We're under pay professionals right now, but that doesn't make us any less professional. Or maybe we're just freelancers? Yes. They're, professional, they're professionals of their own calibers. So, I think what we should check about is room service. Yes. Yeah, the two glasses. T tell me again about our room service. Uh, again, sir. At exactly nine, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guests had requested iced coffee. $18 was the charge, as I recall. I see. Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we didn't skip on the ice either, so... What did he say? What did you say? Ah, uh, oh, er, rather, quite. Oh boy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, well sir, you were, you didn't ask. Nice try. <laughs> That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Uh, yes, quite. Cool. Indeed. It was the, uh, er, uh, yeah, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I... <coughs> specifically asked, sir. Uh, oof. You, you fool! Oh. I've done it. I won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Y yes, sir. Then, when you bought the room service, you didn't see that man in the room. That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In laying this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple, it was. man with her. The man who checked in with Miss May. <clears throat> Your Honor, as she has, has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. No. My, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. <laughs> Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. 
I expect the prostitution and defense to look into the matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all for the trial of M Maya Fay. The court is adjourned. Not guilty. High five. September 7th, tw 2024 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? Yeah, I think you might be. I think I might be your newest fan. I think you might be my only fan. That's a child. For now. Ugh, God damn it. You blew it earlier. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other turn you was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his. With his eyes wide and trembling lips. It sent shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. <laughs> so, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet, anyway. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charm. This won't work with everyone. Work everywhere. Definitely, and definitely not my pants. I'm a gay man, says the fans. Fans. Yeah, totally. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there was only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all. Now. Anyway. Time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center. And it's up to me to set her free. I think we're gonna call it for this recording. I think so. To be continued? Yep. I've been Pixel Cheesecake. And I've been Shaw. And we will see all of you in the next episode. Happy Halloween, everyone, and have a lovely day, night, evening. Who's that behind you? Bye bye now. Bye bye now.